I'm a postdoc currently in my third year here uh, in the School of Medicine in the Department of Pathology. And I'm actually a cancer researcher. And now I'm in the translational space of cancer research. So I do biomarker discovery and development. Um, it's very interesting what I do, uh, to me at least. Uh, my, my previous life, I was very much a basic science researcher working with cell lines. Um, and working in the breast cancer health disparities space in the nuclear receptor world. Now I'm in this translational space, which generally is defined as bench to bedside. So I'm working with tissues from patients with, can with cancer and just trying to find a better way to define who should and should not be receiving treatment. And really my emphasis is on the should not. Um, right now I focus with a cancer treatment type called cancer immunotherapy which is this revolutionary type of cancer treatment that uses the body's immune system to fight cancers. Um, and it's incredible when it works. It works so, so well, but unfortunately it doesn't always work. Um, and right now I'm in uh, what's called the non-small cell lung cancer um, space. So that's a particular type of lung cancer. And with this type, when patients receive immunotherapy, only one in five patients are actually responding. Um, and this is, it's generally, Pre in, the, in its previous life, it was really given in later stage. So I'm talking in the, in the later stages, really only 20% of patients who are receiving this treatment are receiving any, any benefit. And part of the reason for that is because what they use as the current biomarker is a particular protein called PDL1. And it's just not great. It's, it's not the best. It's the best we have for now. So I'm working in a lot of different uh, modalities, um, and my colleagues are as well, to try to find really anything that's better than that. Um, and I'm focusing on RNA and trying to find um, a way to define who should not be receiving the drug. So that's, it's really exciting. I love the work that I'm doing here. So it's so interesting because I, I've always been this person that says, I'll never do X, and then I couldn't proceed to do it. So I, never, I said I would never do a PhD, and I got my PhD. Um, and I said I would never do a postdoc, and here I am doing a postdoc, and I actually met my current boss um, at a conference um, when I was a third-year PhD student. It's the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, which is one of my favorite can um, cancer conferences out there. Um, and I was presenting my work, and you know I was very young, a little youngling there. And my current PI, he approached me, and he was so kind. And it was the first experience I had with a senior scientist who wasn't like talking down to me. Mm -hmm. Um, so that really stuck out to me. So when I was ready to defend um, about two years later, I reached out to him and I said, you know, I'm, I'm considering maybe doing a postdoc. Um, and to be honest, I said I would only do a postdoc. I was like, if I do, I guess if I do one, I'll do it with him. So it worked out really perfectly. He actually had a, a spot opening up um, and the timing was just perfect for me to come and, and take on this new postdoc role. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to highlight the Black Postdoc Association. Um, so I am one of the three co-founders of the Black Postdoc Association. Um, we started about six months after I started here. Um, it was in in 2020. Um, everyone knows the the chaos that the world was in in 2020, but especially in May 2020 with the killing of George Floyd, um, there was a really big movement, I'd say, um, in general. And one of the things I ended up connected with two other women, um, through actually the broader postdoc association where we had formed uh, what's now called the racial justice subcommittee. But within that, uh, we had sort of made pockets within this, this committee that was forming. And one of the pockets was talking about retention because one of the things we've all experienced at our individual institutions um, is people are recruited all the time, but you don't see retention as much. And to us and you know to many people, the reason you're not retaining people is because of the culture that exists. Uh, it's the lack of community. It's so it's really multiple. But with with that, we decided to actually start the Black Postdoc Association, and we uh, proposed it to the Yale School of Medicine uh, Department of um, Equity and Inclusion to Dean Darren Lattimore and the Associate Dean at the time, Rochelle Smith, and they were incredible, and they were so just supportive from the beginning, um, and they continue to be. Rochelle has, has left the institution and she's still super supportive of us. And um, Dean Lattimore is absolutely just such a, a godsend, to be honest, he's, he's incredible. Um, but with that, we, we have been here since the summer of 2020. It's still going, there's new, completely new executive board now who's incredible. Um, I love how 
we've become more and more integrated with the broader postdoc association, and that's really how it was designed to really work in parallel with the broader postdoc association. We don't need to repeat any efforts. The goal is really just to form a community, and it's something that many of us need. It's very open to everyone. You don't have to be black. <laughs> you don't have to self-identify as black. It's every race, religion, anything you can think of. Um, we have, those are the members that, that make up the Black Postdoc Association, and we, we really focus on bringing unique programming. So um, in our first year, one of the speakers um, that, I, that I recruited to come was actually a lawyer who spoke about the Crown Act um, and talked about natural hair and the law and really talking about natural hair in the workplace and what's a nat what is natural hair versus a natural hairstyle and um, what are the protections that exist because Connecticut became, the, I believe, the 14th state to, to pass the Crown Act, uh, probably the month before she came to speak. And it really was open. So many people attended it. And it was just such a beautiful experience where I had, you know, conversations with people who aren't black and brown. You know, I'm Afro-Latina. I usually have a little Afro. So, you know, people who don't have that experience, um, you know, saying, like, how eye-opening it was to them. And that's really, I think, the goal of the Black post Sex Association is to really highlight uh, postdocs of um, like peers, you know, persons ex um, excluded because of ethnicity and race, um, really highlighting them either from outside the institution or within the institution, forming that community and really starting different types of conversations that weren't here before. Um, and that's definitely the, proud of, the thing I'm the, I'm the most proud of. Um, even within that, we were part of the, the co-founders of the Intersection Science Fellow Symposium, which goes right with one of our, um, our our tiers really, which is to uplift, uh, especially people who do the diversity, equity, inclusion work, and also are incredible scientists, because that's something we had all heard throughout our lives. Um, you know that, oh, you don't want to do that DEI work because then it's going to affect your science. And you know what the the ISFS has done is it's shown like no, 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 you can have incredible scientists who are also making such a incredible change right, really deep down um, in their institutions and who are going to be incredible faculty as well. Um, so that's definitely one of the other things that I've, I've put a lot of time into that one, into the first um, round of that. So it's something I'm very, very proud of as well. What Yale does really well is having that, of, that Office of Postdoc Affairs. And um, I, I will say the OPA has been really, really supportive, um, especially of the YPA, obviously, um, but also the Black Postdoc Association. And then I mentioned the uh, the School of Medicine Department of um, um, Equity, Inclusion, Belonging. Um, they have also been just so supportive, and it was it's very refreshing uh, to step into a role as a postdoc where you're kind of this in between person. You're not a faculty, you're not really a student anymore, but you kind of feel like a student because you just finished. Um, and with that, uh, just having really, I'll say adults who are just so supportive. And, you know, I feel like beyond just the Black Postdoc Association, anything I've ever like, anything I've ever proposed, I feel so much support from everyone. And that's, I think, very unique. Um, and like I said, it's from my limited experience and from hearing other people's stories. And I, I do wish that other institutions had these type of offices that existed that are just really there to uplift you. Um, and I think it sort of helps to take a little bit of the burden off when, when you're thinking about your postdoc and trying to thrive as a postdoc, which is more than just your science. Um, it's everything else that you need, all, the, all your career development you need. It's about thinking about your next step. So it's really nice to have all these resources. Um, there's also like the career services is, is incredible here. And it's something I, I wish I had when I was younger uh, because I think it's been really instrumental in my, in my next steps, at least thinking about my next steps. Mm -hmm.